All right, thank you guys for coming. This is the stretching webinar and my name is Meredith. I'm one of the health coaches and personal trainers at Holton Wellness. And I'm sure maybe I've seen some of you or talked to some of you either on the phone or in person now that we're doing um, wellness assessments in person. So uh, today we're talking about stretching for health and just how to incorporate stretching throughout our day, the benefits of stretching. And stretching is one of those um, forms of wellness that everyone seems like they want to do more of. We want to stretch more. We want to get more movement in throughout our day. And we do really well. And then oftentimes it does fall to the wayside, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Ways that will be easier to fit in stretching throughout our day. I'm sure you guys saw this statistic I put on the little blurb or the informational flyer. Americans are sitting on average of 10 hours each day. That is a high number of hours to be sitting down and to be sedentary. And research has linked this sedentary behavior with an increased risk of obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. And I was just like astounded by this statistic. I was like, there's no way I sit down, you know, 10 hours, you know, even eight or seven hours a day. And I sat down coincidentally, and I started adding up my hours of how many hours I was sitting each day. So driving to work, you know, if I'm sitting down at work or if I'm at my office doing work, a lot of times we're doing um, office work or we're doing wellness assessments and we're sitting down and then driving back home sitting and then sitting down for dinner and then my activity after work and I was like oh my gosh I'm sitting for an average of you know seven hours a day and that totally shocked me so I'm going to give you guys two minutes to write down how many hours a day <laughs> sitting down you won't have to share it with every, anyone. It'll just be for you. So write it down and just have that have that number right next to you. I'll give you guys two minutes, okay? All right. Was anyone surprised by the number of hours they were sitting down? Mm. Yeah. No? You're like, yes. Oh, I know. More ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just kind of eye-opening. I mean, I was like, I definitely probably move a lot more than I sit down. I was like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe it. And it's just sometimes the nature of our jobs. If, we're, if we have a desk job, you know, we're just going to be sitting down a lot more than we are moving. Do most of us here have desk or office jobs? Yes. Yes, desk job. Yep. With, with the ability to stand, the desk does raise. So that's a plus. That is nice. Yes. And standing actually is a lot more beneficial, obviously, than sitting. So if you can have a standing desk, that's great. And basically, these habits that we're building at our desk, since most of us work, you know, sitting down at an office or a desk, they are either directly contributing to some of these diseases, or they're going to help negate some of these diseases. So making sure we have good habits, good desk habits, and moving more, getting up and stretching, getting up for a quick walk. Because um, if we're just being sedentary, those that's going to be leading to these diseases I listed out here, and also certain muscular disorders. If you think about posture, so it's great to have standing desk to improve your posture when you're working. Um, lower back pain, sitting and sedentary activity can lead to that lower back pain, carpal tunnel. So an array of different items. Um, you have a standing desk with anti, that is a great idea too. If you can find one of those, I'm curious where you got it at. A balance board. 
I'm sure Amazon has one. Ah, nice, that's awesome. See, there we go. So if you look to the side here, let's be sitting disease. So sitting disease is actually a real disease. It is a term coined by the scientific community, commonly used when referring to metabolic syndrome and the ill effects of overly sedentary lifestyle. So metabolic syndrome just includes high blood pressure, high blood sugar, excess body fat around the waist, so that's why in the wellness assessments, we take your guys' waist measurements um, because a higher waist circumference tends to lead to more increased risk of heart disease. And then um, metabolic syndrome also includes abnormal cholesterol levels. And that could include higher total cholesterol or a low HDL. If you guys remember um, me, Becky, or Linda, explaining HDL numbers to you. Uh -huh. people, yeah, who are more active are going to have higher HDL. And if you're more sedentary or sitting a lot more, you might have a lower HDL. You can read some of these statistics. I love um, this one. You burn 30% more calories when you are standing versus when you're sitting. And again, that's just a, a, an, a range, 30%. So it could be a little bit more, a little bit less. But even that standing can create more movement. You might be stepping side to side more. You might be turning more just naturally than sitting. So what is stretching? Uh, stretching is when you take a muscle through the full range of motion with the intention of improving flexibility or joint stiffness. Um, I don't want to assume, but um, at least for my case, I try to stretch so I can prevent that joint stiffness because I am sitting a lot throughout the day. And by the end of the day, I might notice, oh, my hip flexors or my hips are tight. So I want to reduce that joint stiffness. And that's just the point of stretching to kind of um, loosen up our hips, loosen up some of these muscles that are tightened throughout the day. And so the main stretches that we're gonna be talking about are static and dynamic stretching. There are other types of stretching listed down below there, like the ballistic, um, active isolated stretching, myofascial release, and PNF stretching. We're not gonna talk about those. Those are more geared towards athletes or athlete specific um, stretching. So the two types of stretching, the first one we're gonna talk about is static stretching. And this is when you extend a muscle group to its maximal point and you hold it for a period of time. And you don't wanna extend it to the point of pain, but you wanna extend it so you feel the stretch and you hold it for a total of around 60 seconds. But we wanna break that 60 seconds down into a couple of sets, you know, two to three sets of 20 or 40 seconds is recommended. And the ACSM, which is the American Council of Sports Medicine, they recommend doing stretches two to three times a week. And if you really want to see optimal benefits, then to incorporate it daily into your activity. So we want to do these types of stretches when your muscles are warmed up a little bit. So if we think about, okay, it's a little bit colder out today. We don't want to immediately go into a stretch because we don't want to injure muscles. We do want to warm them up just slightly before we do some of the static stretches. Some examples would be a calf raise, a hamstring stretch, latissimus dorsi, which is your, your side, your back. And the, according to the Journal of Strength and Conditioning, research has found that performing static stretches before lifting reduced overall strength when performing squats. So if you guys are active here, if you ladies and gentlemen are moving, um, participating in some form of physical activity, it is best to not do the static stretching beforehand, but to reserve it for afterwards. Um, because we do see some decreased um, squat performance or lifting performance if we do static stretching beforehand. So if you are a runner, then don't do any of the quadricep stretches um, or a hamstring stretch. We want to focus more on dynamic stretching 
before that run, before that physical activity. And dynamic stretching is slow and controlled. You're gonna have you know, 12 to 15 repetitions of each um, stretch. And this is the purpose of getting the blood flowing. You know, Our muscles are gonna be warmed up more. We're gonna be ready for that physical activity. And our muscles will be ready. The blood flow will be going as well. And so one example would be leg swings. So if you're gonna go for a run, you'd wanna maybe do a couple leg swings, some yeah. simple lunges, and then you run, and then you would get into those static stretches at the end. And research has supported that if you wanna improve your overall strength, you should perform these dynamic stretches before lifting. And the same goes for, you know, if you're at your office or a desk and it's cold out, make sure you do the dynamic stretches, um, one or two, just to get the blood flowing and get specific to what you're doing. So if any of you are participating in physical activity, if you're doing lower body, focus on lower body stretches. If you're going to be doing upper body activity, focus on upper body stretches. And so just the importance of stretching, I know I've already named a few, but that overall improved health and improved circulation. So the circulation is really key here. If we're sitting for you know, that hour that you guys wrote down, whatever hour that is, so seven hours, if we're sitting for seven hours, our blood flow is essentially stagnant. So I think of it in terms of you know, looking at a pond outside, it's raining. If we see a pond, it's, there's no flowing water. But it. it looks a little icky. It doesn't look clean. That's what I think of when I've been sitting for a long period of time. I'm like, oh, my, my blood doesn't look good. It's not flowing very well. I want it to be more like a river. Something that's flowing, it's a little bit more cleaner. It has improved circulation. So the same is true with our blood. We want that blood flow. We want that circulation. We need um, to remove those toxins. An important part of when we get physical activity is removing those toxins from our body. And that is done by you know, having more blood flow and also just having blood flow to your brain. So if you're thinking we've been sitting down for three hours trying to work and we just can't concentrate, Sometimes we just need to get up and move, do a quick stretch break and get the blood flowing just a little bit to be more productive throughout the rest of your work day. Um, stretching helps improve your range of motion and it increases your flexibility. So I used to do a uh, class at a retirement home and we would focus a lot on range of motion. And it is true, if you don't use your range of motion, you will eventually lose it a little bit um, each year. So one of the simple things that we did was just a balloon toss. So reaching up, getting that movement and tossing the balloon at that assisted living and that helped improve their range of motion. And it was just a simple, fun stretching activity. And that's gonna help maintain and improve that range of motion. And then back prevention. I've done a webinar on how to prevent or at least lessen lower back pain. And stretching is going to be a key factor in preventing that lower back pain, specifically if we're sitting for seven, eight, nine hours each day. So these are just some muscle groups that are beneficial to stretch. So we have our lower body and our upper body. In our lower body, it would be our hamstrings, which are behind our legs, our quadriceps, which are in the front of our legs. Our psoas and our hip flexors are our hip muscles. So those are specifically probably feeling tight if we do sit down all day. And then our calf. And then upper body would be chest. So we really wanna focus on stretching out our chest because if you're sitting at a desk, oftentimes, you know, throughout the day, what do you do? You lean forward. And that lean is causing tightness in our chest area. So our chest needs to be stretched out just a little bit. And then our latissimus dorsi is your back. We need to stretch that out. And then triceps are always good to stretch out too if you would like to stretch that out. So the, those are just some main muscle groups or areas that we'll focus on stretching on. 
And we will be getting into some stretching actually. So um, I'm gonna explain these two dynamic stretches first. We won't be doing these ones, but we're gonna be doing the ones afterwards. So dynamic stretches, these two, we have cat camel. And if you guys have the handouts that Katie sent out, um, these should be on handout. And these are gonna be great for um, back prevention as well as just dynamic stretching that you can do maybe at the office or before you start any physical activity. So cat camel, you're on all fours and you're going to put, um, take your spine through a full range of motion. So all the way up and then all the way down. And it's just gonna be nice and fluid and flexible. We're not forcing a movement of the spine. We're just keeping it nice and easy. So for 12 repetitions, and then we have the second one, which is the psoas stretch. So I mentioned that in the previous slide. That's going to be focusing on your hips or your hip flexor area and just giving it a nice stretch. Um, specifically, if you do sit, definitely do the psoas lunge. So you're almost doing a lunge and then you're going to slightly bend your arm up and you're going to feel a slight stretch in the leg that is in the back. All right, so we're actually gonna do some stretches right now. Um, I'm gonna take you through just a few of them. We're not gonna hold them for a very long period of time just to get um, the idea of some stretches to include throughout your office day. And the main thing here is, you know, whatever that hour is that you're sitting down, really we just wanna focus on trying to reduce it. So if you're sitting down for seven hours, how can we reduce it to six and a half hours, to six hours? And these stretches are gonna be a great tool to try to help lower that sedentary activity. So if we do these stretches, you know, once in the morning and then once after lunch, that could be 20, 30 minutes of more movement that you created throughout your day just by doing some of these stretches. So I'll take you through some of these and some of these you also have on the first sheet um, of the handout that Katie gave you. So we're gonna go ahead and stand up if you have in the area and the room to stand up. And normally we would be in person and we would do this all together. Um, yeah, you can turn your video off. Feel free to make room for yourself. We're gonna be going right into those dynamic stretches because we wanna get our blood flowing just a little bit today because it is very cold out and my muscles are very cold right now. So we're gonna do you know, 20, 10 to 20 seconds of the knee stretch. So we're gonna hold up one leg and switch to the other leg. If you need balance, find a chair to make sure you don't lose your balance when you're doing these uh, knee to chest stretches. And if your chair has wheels on them, make sure it is behind something stable. Um, just something to keep in mind. So again, keep doing these. Warm up your lower body. And it's warming up your hips, your hip flexors, and your psoas muscles. All right, we're going to get into arm circles. We're going to focus on getting some blood flow to our upper body. So we're going to go forward. And then we're gonna go backwards. So go ahead and switch. Again, these are a few examples of dynamic exercises that you can add into your work day. I know they seem a little bit cheesy, but if you do it after you do them for a while. All right. Now we're gonna get into some static stretches. You can do this um, standing or you can do it seated. I like to do it. Um, standing normally, but for the sake of this video, I am seated right now. We're going to do a classic neck stretch because we really do want to stretch out our neck. You know, we might be leaning forward a lot throughout the day typing. So we're just going to do a simple back and then forward. And forward. We're going to turn to our side. Turn to our other side. Oh. 
We're going to tilt our head one way. And tilt it the other way. Good. And then the second one is hip stretch. So again, this one's going to be focusing on your hip flexors and your psoas. So go ahead and get in that seated position. Cross one leg above your other leg that's seat seated. And you're just going to hold this position. And you're going to feel it in the hip area that's on the leg that's on top of um, your other leg. If you need to feel a little bit more of a stretch, go ahead and lean forward slightly. And we'll keep holding this one because this one feels really good. Good. And then go ahead and switch. You can also do this one on the ground. I know it's a little bit harder to do on the ground. Um, but you get a little bit of a better stretch on the ground too. Sometimes you can throw in a little ankle rotation. If your ankles need some stretching out or some movement circulation in your lower extremities, go ahead and do a little ankle twirl. All right, the next one is overhead reach. Again, I like to do this one standing normally. We're just gonna take both of our hands, clasp them together, and reach all the way up. Lift your head so it's looking up as well, and lean slightly back. You're gonna feel this, you know, in your lower lumbar, and you're gonna feel it in your um, latissimus dorsi, your back muscles. This one's probably one of my favorite stretches after a long day of at my computer, just stretching out your whole upper body. All right, the next one is trunk rotation. We're gonna focus on just giving our spine some more flexibility and movement. So go ahead and turn. Um, you're gonna to wanna to do this one at your desk, sit, um, sit a de seated down, and then you're just gonna turn your whole body and rotate it to the side. Make sure your, your face is also following where you're turning your body, so you're not straining your neck. You can go ahead and switch sides. All right, the next one is hamstring stretch. So I like to do this one standing up. Again, make sure your chair is stable and not on wheels. You're gonna lift one leg up and you're gonna keep this leg straight. And you're gonna slightly bend forward to feel a little bit of stretch in your hamstrings. Again, your hamstrings are in the back of your leg. We really need to focus on just stretching this one out a little bit. And when you're doing this one, make sure your hips are squared. You're not turning your hips um, into the stretch, making sure they're nice and square. Okay, go ahead and switch legs. For this one, I like to keep my hands on my hips if I have good balance because I notice if I try to touch my toes, what happens, my posture will then deteriorate when I'm doing this. So keeping your hands on your hips is a nice little trick. That way you're not bending forward. Oh, like look at that curve. Like we don't want that. <laughs> so straight, slight bend, hands on the hips for good posture. Um, I will try to share this infograph because I know that I sent you one sheet.
but they are um, different stretches on the sheet I sent you. So I'll give this one to you guys as well. Um, standing chest stretch, this one's gonna be great. Like I mentioned before, oftentimes our chest is very tight. So we need to stretch it out. So if you have a wall or a uh, corner wall in your office or room, go ahead to that wall and you're just going to um, step into that wall and stretch out your chest muscles. Or if you just have one wall, just use one. So for the sake of this video, I don't have a wall right near me. I'll have to turn around now and turn around um, on, on you. And switch arms. Good. All right. The last one is just a squat hip opener. So this one is going to be great again for your lower extremities, for the hip, the psoas. We're going to get in a little bit wider than shoulder width stance. So open up your feet nice and wide. I like to have my toes pointed out. And we're just going to go down into a squat. So pretty simple. We're just gonna hold it, but we'll feel it in our lower half. Sometimes I will do a little rotation or a twist just to add some more dynamic movement. Just to get that blood flowing a little bit more. If you wanna make that one a dynamic stretch, you would do some squats. So that would be a great dynamic stretch to add into your work day to get the blood flowing a little bit more too. So those are just a few um, exercises and stretches to add into your day. Hopefully that got the blood flowing a little bit more and loosened your body up just a little bit more today. So we just did one round. Um, so feel free to do another round after this, or you can do another mm -hmm. round after work to get in those two, three sets, two to three times a week. And those are all the stretches I have for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed the stretching. I'm letting you guys know of the upcoming webinar we have will be the Mediterranean Diet. And that will be Tuesday, October 12th with Gretchen, the registered dietitian. So definitely check that one out if you would like some awesome Mediterranean diet recipes and tips. And then my resources, most of them I got from American Council of Sports Medicine. And yeah. What questions do you guys have, if any? I know it's new, it's about to be noon right now, so you guys might have to leave. Yeah.